you can see there's the final placement. Does it look exactly the same? I think so. I think that's gonna work just fine. There's just the slightest amount of play. It feels pretty good. So as you can see here, I've already removed my ESC and motor covers. I have this 120 amp Ovonic ESC in here. These aren't going to be released probably till December is what I'm hearing. And a brushless 3650 sized motor from Hobby King in here. We're just going to go ahead and remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight screws. Pull off the center crossbar so I can get to the motor mount. And then we're going to go ahead and try to modify that motor mount and replace that stock 15 tooth 0.7 mod pinion gear with this one I have here, which should be a 0.7 mod 27 tooth pinion gear. Now that I have these, I think eight screws removed, I should be able to go ahead and just kind of remove this crossbar assembly. It looks like I forgot a screw here. And check out my previous video on how to install the ESC and motor. So yeah, this is just going to go ahead and lift right out. All right, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and slide the motor out of here. And then you can see the mount is right there. So what we're going to need to do is pull the motor away further from the spur gear which is right here and to do that I'm gonna have to drill new holes in here so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this mount and we'll go ahead and try to put some new holes in here and actually before I do that I need to go ahead and remove this 15 tooth pinion gear it's press fit so I'm just gonna I did put some super glue on it last time hopefully I can get it off There we go. Now again, we wanna move this away further from the spur gear. So to do that, we need to move the motor mount, let's see, this way, which would mean we need to drill holes about here and here. Since nobody's done this before, I'm just gonna to have to kind of guess where to drill these holes and hope for the best. So let me go ahead and fiddle with this and hopefully I get it close on the first try. Before I do that, let's go ahead and check out this new pinion gear. Make sure it is indeed 0.7 mod. Seems to mesh just fine with the old pinion gear. You can see it's a lot bigger. And this one uses a grub screw. So that's, you know, more traditional than a press fit. And this should just slide right on here. Very nice. So now we just need to position this such that it's in here like that. So I went ahead and compared the size of these two pinion gears and the old one's about the same size as this middle portion on the new pinion gear. Then I went ahead and measured and it looks like we're about five millimeters um, different in size on each side. So a total of 10 or one centimeter. So we need to move about five millimeters, I believe, to the right on this motor mount. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drill a hole about half a centimeter, five millimeters over here and here, and hopefully that lines up. If it's not quite right, I should be able to make a little slider and fine tune the gear mesh. And it looks like half a millimeter is going to put us right on the edge here So probably right about here, right on the edge of this um, cutout part here. And then I'll do the same thing right about there. 
on the other one. So I found a drill bit that's about the exact same size as the existing hole here. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. And then ideally I'd like to kind of bevel the surface here so the screw can fit in there, but that's not gonna be critical. I'm gonna try to drill it right about here and hopefully that's about right. Okay, I drilled my two holes and hopefully they line up pretty well. So now we're gonna go ahead and test fit this and see how far off I was. It took some trial and error, but I have the mesh set, maybe even a little loose for the 27 tooth, but I'll fine tune that when I put it in there. And what I did is I did grind out a little bit of this honeycomb material just to make sure it wasn't, the motor wasn't touching there. And then for the motor mount, it's not very clean, but you can see here, that's how far off I had to offset it. I think I'm gonna put a little epoxy in here to strengthen the motor mount where it's, um, you know, cut in there from the factory. And uh, I think we'll be in good shape. So let me go ahead and add some epoxy here and then I'll go ahead and uh, install the motor. So I went ahead and used some of this JB Weld steel stick and filled in the uh, low spots on the motor mount and sanded it down. It's not perfect, but it's better. And I think that'll give the screws a better surface to sit on. So I didn't get things quite perfect, but you can see there's the final placement. They're a little offset. It doesn't really matter as long as the mesh is good and I have clearance from the motor shaft. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and install the pinion gear and I've measured it out. This motor shaft's a little short, but it grabs all the way in here. So I'm gonna put it about there and I uh, think that'll work well. So I'm gonna put a little Loctite on there, tighten down the um, grub screw and we should be good to go. So you can see here, I just gotta pull it out a little bit. And then our mesh. Yeah, baby! Appears to be about right. I thought I was having binding above the pinion, so I ground out a little bit of the plastic. But then I realized what was happening is when I set the mesh, this was not pushed all the way down because the screw that holds the cover in place is what forces this down into place. So it's actually grinding the top of the spur gear off. Not good. Don't make the same mistake that I did. And um, I'm gonna hope that I didn't take too much material off of this and I can still use the spur gear, but it may let go when I'm running it, unfortunately. 55 on 3S last time. Let's see if we can hit 55 on 2S with the taller 27 tooth pinion gear. Will the gearing hold together? Nope. Shredded the spur gear. That's unfortunate. That's a shame. I spent a lot of time putting that thing in there with a slipping spur gear. 47 miles an hour on 2S, but it's done. Well, that did not end well. I had damaged this spur gear too much and it completely stripped when I was running it. It got up to 46 or 47 miles an hour on 2S. And instead of getting another plastic one, I found online the same company that makes one of the servos I tested in this truck, J-Duel. They make a metal spur gear that should fit in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this in here. Um, it should be stronger. It's critical that I get the mesh set. It's still gonna be difficult, but hopefully I actually have it right. I think if I had not damaged this gear when I was intentionally spinning it, trying to grind down the plastic, I was actually spinning the pinion gear, trying to grind down the plastic inside of this case that needed to be um, removed to help the clearance issues in the pinion. I've actually done that before where I've spun the pinion gear, just put some pressure down on the plastic that was touching it and let the pinion gear 
eat away at whatever was having clearance issues. But I thought I was eating away at this plastic and what was happening was I was eating away the spur gear because I did not have this snugged in. So this shaft wasn't sitting in place properly. And yeah, as you can see, it just caused this to, to spin. And um, it's hard to do while I'm filming here, but you can see it clearly uh, stripped when I was running it. So that's really unfortunate, but it is what it is. So we go ahead now and try to install this metal spur gear. And what we're gonna do is just pick this up, pull this out, leave this um, front end in place, carefully pull out the spur gear and bearing and inspect the gear. Does it look exactly the same? I think so. I think that's gonna work just fine. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this bearing on the metal gear and we're gonna slide it onto the shaft. And then refit that gear on there as well. And then this should hopefully seat back down in here like that. And you can see hopefully the bearing is down in that groove where it should be. And I think we're in business. And now I just need to verify that I have the mesh right between the new spur gear and the pinion gear here. So in order to do that, I really need to cinch this down tightly so that it's just like it would be when installed. And it might be too loose. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall two of these screws from this brace here and try to cinch down the cover so that it mimics like it's installed. Hopefully these screws aren't too long to do that, but I'll go ahead and give that a try. Now I have these two screws snug down in here. So this housing snug down and let's go ahead and check the gear mesh. After much finicking with this, I think I have it as good as I'm going to get it. You can see here, there's just the slightest amount of play. It feels pretty good. They're 0.7 mod gears, so they're actually fairly large. But, um, you know, the paper trick works better, I find, with like 48 pitch gears. And I did try the paper trick on here. And it goes through there fairly easily, which probably is a good thing. Because the bigger the, you know, gears, the more separation you need. So I'm going to say that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. And hopefully it stays in that position when I uh, close up things. It could move slightly. Uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit of movement uh, and this will possibly move it. But yeah, that's the best I'm gonna do. This is really tedious and hopefully this works. I did add some Loctite to those motor screws and um, cinched them down once I got everything dialed in with the Loctite, so. Here we go. Oh, and I found it helpful to have all four tires off the ground when checking the mesh here. That way I could rotate this gear freely and make sure everything looked like it was the way it should be. Everything's back together. Let's go ahead and turn things on and see if things seem like they're together right and the mesh looks good. We might be in business here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and give that a try. We'll run it on 2S, which is the max these tires are going to be able to handle. 
I think it'll get up close to 55 miles an hour on 2S with some speed run tires, assuming I can get them to fit on here. It should go closer to 75 plus on 3S and on 4S, 85, maybe even approaching 90 miles an hour if I can keep it on the road. So this was really tedious, but I think this video will really help you guys if you're deciding to do this modification, kind of see, you know, all the mistakes I made and hopefully get this thing together in a lot less than the four and a half hours it took me from start to end. Uh, spent way more time on this than I would have liked to. A little embarrassed to say how long it took me to get this together, but I think it might be in good shape now and I'll try to get it out and run it this weekend. Stay tuned. Thank you.